What's up guys, John Anthony here. Today I wanna to talk about demonstrations of higher value, otherwise known as DHVs, okay? Many of us who got into the seduction community and pick up artist stuff, read the book, The Game by Neil Strauss and or Mystery Method by Eric von Markovic, okay? Otherwise known as mystery. So we'll get into what DHVs are, are they still relevant today? When and where should you use them? Etc. and their utility. Uh, before we continue, please like and subscribe below if you are not already subscribed. Um, I have a lot of new good video ideas coming up, so things are going to get exciting. And as I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to do a global tour in the winter months with a couple other advanced friends, a 300 count friend, a 400 lay count friend, and we're just going to go travel all around. I'll have my camera equipment. We'll have, um, you know, three fucking top elite guys able to make some really cool videos in cool environments. So, okay, DHV, I, I went back to Mystery's book, The Mystery Method, which I've listened to. I haven't listened to it lately, but back in the day, I listened to it on audiobook, like at work, like on a daily basis, plus on my commute to and from work. So I really ingrained, like I know this book inside out. I can like quote parts of it from memory and all this stuff. Um, and a lot of it made it into my current day game. I, th I think uh, the mystery method, although a, a bunch of it was suboptimal and, and a bunch of it was wrong, there was a lot of really good stuff in there. But I went to the DHV section just to kind of give you guys a background. So mystery says a DHV, a demonstration of higher value. Anything you can do that conveys higher S and R value is a DHV and S and R is what he refers to as survival and replication. So this is going back into evolutionary times. What is pre-programmed into a woman? Okay, it's, it's now antiquated circuitry in our modern day, but what makes them tick in terms of their attraction? Okay, he had a concept called attraction switches, which I will cover in a separate video. But he says here, for example, if you open it, uh, he calls it a set, which is a group of people and already have two girls with you, you have demonstrated pre-selection, which is a DHV. Okay, pre-selection is other women find you attractive, they approve you, therefore it's much easier and quicker for other girls to approve you. Okay, and this is even true in animal studies. I didn't look up the exact study, but I remember reading that, like I think it was with monkeys or something, or some animal, I'm pretty sure it was monkeys, they had one by itself, like a dude monkey, right? And the chicks like didn't really give a shit. Then they took a chick monkey and put it next to the dude. And all the other chicks came over and all of a sudden became very interested. Okay, so it, it's basically like, it's a pre-approval, like a pre-screening thing, okay? Chicks have to screen to make sure you're of value, to make sure you're a worthy mate in the wild. Okay, like, that's why I said antiquated circuitry. It's now in the modern time. We're not having to go out and collect food and fucking fight off predators and stuff like that. But women still need someone to provide and take care of the offspring in the modern time. But it doesn't quite translate how it, how it used to in primitive times. The point is when girls see that another attractive female has approved of you, okay, that bypasses her screening process and her value, you know, research process, okay, because this other girl has vetted you, okay, see how that works? And so now she can be attracted to you much quicker. He, another example he gives is if a woman discovers that you have a lot of money, this is also a DHV. A rich man may mean a rich lifestyle for her and she is hardwired to improve her chances of survival and replication by aligning with those who can help her. Okay, she will find you more attractive. However, if she perceives you are trying to impress her with your money, she will lose attraction. This is because only lower value people try to impress. Such behavior is considered a DLV demonstration of lower value. If you're trying to impress, you must be of lower status and thus unattractive. Okay, that's why when you see like on Tinder or Instagram, like these stupid fucking losers leaning up against like a Lamborghini or like trying to look cool, like with a gym pose or whatever. It's like, oh, I worked on this body. Like now let me look really cool with it. And the chicks are like, what a fucking loser, right? Or look, I bought a Lamborghini or I just saw a Lamborghini on the street. Either way, it doesn't matter. And the guy's trying to show off. The chicks are like, ugh, right? Or I know, like, there's plenty of guys walk around, they're like, oh, did you know I'm a lawyer? Did you know I'm a doctor? Did you know I've done this and that? These are all low value things, okay? 
Another example, if a woman sees you have a lot of social proof from gaming the room, she will feel more attracted to you. Social proof is a DHV. If, however, she sees you are socially unaware and inept, this is a demonstration of lower value. Okay, so, and then he says telling stories that are fun, interesting, and emotionally relevant, demonstrate social skill, which is a DHV. So, RST, Real Social Dynamics, kind of did away with this, right? Like, you had Mystery Method, then RST came along and literally directly ripped off Mystery's company. Okay, the Mystery's company's name was Social Dynamics. And he had, he had the original boot camp format and all this other stuff that, that exists in the modern day. And RSD, literally uh, Owen Cook and uh, Nicholas Coe, who are known as Tyler Durden and Papa, RSD Papa, okay, it's talked about in the book, The Game. They literally stole the name and rebranded it, or not rebranded, named their company Real Social Dynamics, okay, which was like a, a shot at mystery. And then they stole the whole model and all this other shit. But then they got rid of a lot of important concepts. Okay, that, and so these important concepts that are real things didn't make it too far into modern game. Okay, so they did away with DHV and they started focusing on, oh, do natural game, do natural game. However, women are still, as we saw with the monkey example, they're attracted to these primitive things in their circuitry, right? Like the monkey wasn't running game. They just put a hot chick next to him and the other chicks wanted him, okay? One of my best pictures on Tinder I'm like outside, it's like a natural pose, but I'm like, it's like a bright smile, but you can see like a chick's like blonde hair, like cut off, right? Like on the outside of the, on the edge of the picture. And you can see like, there's like two hot chicks behind me and like a hot chick to the side. And they're not even part of my group, but all these chicks around me, I think it like activates those circuits for the girl. And then I had like within 24 hours, I had over 100 matches, okay, uh, on a new account with, with just that one picture. I didn't even have any other pictures in the profile. Um, okay, so the point is, RSD did away with demonstrations of higher value. They did away with buyers anymore. So they started saying, "Oh, go for quick polls, go for quick polls," and then surprise, surprise, guys never built up. I have videos that talk about how to build up a qualitative requisite amount of comfort so that the girl doesn't get buyers anymore and regret sleeping with you and thereby leave you. Okay, but like Mystery said, it was four to 10 hours of comfort with an average of seven. But I explained in those videos how it's not a quantitative metric of comfort, it's a qualitative amount of comfort, which you can use shortcuts and hacks to accomplish very quickly. But the point is, back to demonstrations of higher value, they kind of got rid of a lot of these things. When I'm in the interaction, I'm mostly just firing demonstrations of higher value. Okay, it's conversational topics. I'm talking about how I traveled all around the world. I went to graduate school in England, how I have two masters and two bachelor's degrees, how I used to work on nuclear missile defense, how I used to DJ at big clubs, um, you know, different hot chicks I've dated and, and different cool stories and fun stuff like this. And this is, this is all triggering various attraction switches, okay, and it's congruent with who I am. Those are all real stories. I embellish with some of them, okay, for added effect. Like I said, I DJ Tomorrowland, which is the biggest event in the entire world and I have it photoshopped and it's pretty much like a lock. Anytime a chick is into electronic music or when I mention I'm a DJ, she lights up. I show her the Tomorrowland picture, boom, and guys are like, oh, I don't wanna lie, whole nother topic. I actually did DJ clubs. It's just embellishing, you know, why not take your DHVs to the extreme, okay? Now, okay, here he says examples of DHVs. So, so basically, I still use them in every interaction, I'm just, cycling through different ones. And on every date, I have like a set of ones that I'm hitting. And some, some guys that I was coaching recently, they said that they're just having these bland conversation topics on their dates, okay? And I told them, I'm usually talking about this and this and this and this. So what they did was they wrote out a list of different cool shit they've either done in their life or that they're currently doing. And again, you spin these things, like, so say you're like leading a team at work, right? of like computer programmers. You don't want to be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a computer programmer and I, I supervise all these other computer programmers. You can be like, yeah, I'm leading up a big project. I have like all these people under me and, and shit like that. And you know, you don't, you don't want to get down into like the nerd speak or anything like that, right? You want to, it's a position of authority, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So mystery says examples of DHVs. Okay, I'll just, I'll just cycle through them real quick. Pre-selection from other women, that's when you have a hot chick with you. Okay, like in the monkey example. Appearing to be a leader of men. 
okay? That's also an attraction switch he talks about in the book. A leader of men is you are basically fucking, you know, other guys look up to you, okay? You're, you're in charge. Other guys follow your lead, okay? Being a supporter and protector of those you love, that's also an attraction switch that he talks about in the book, okay? So you can talk about how you helped your little sister, your little brother, being non-needy, okay? That doesn't mean fucking blowing up her phone and all this other shit. Being unaffected. You're not rattled. Nothing is a big deal. That's a, that's a common theme throughout his book. Nothing is ever a big deal. Social intelligence, all right? You're, you're able to mingle with large groups of people and, and have fun. You're not just this little fucking awkward guy on the side. Okay, negging her. I don't think this has much of a place anymore in modern game. I've talked about this. That's basically where you, you, his traditional example is you say to the girl, nice nails, are they real? And she's like, when you notice that they're fake, and she's like, no, and you're like, oh, well, I guess they're nice anyways. And the, the objective there is to lower her value relative to your own, okay? And you're supposed to do this to the, to the really hot girls. Arguably, it can work. It's not totally necessary, okay? Having a strong frame, that means, like, things are how you, you're unapologetic, right? Like, you're running the show. You're very confident in your own skin, etc. Having interesting knowledge, okay, which you can acquire from studying a bunch of subjects in school, from working a bunch of different jobs, from traveling a bunch, from having a bunch of different life experiences. Emotional stimulation, okay. He says when you tell your stories, chicks are not really concerned about the facts like men are, right? Like, and this is a generalization, of course. They're not concerned about like all the little details of the story. They're more experiencing how the story makes them feel okay so one story i used to tell back in the day when i was learning all this stuff i had bought a new sports car which is a real thing and i was djing this party which is a real thing and i had this super hot chick with fake tits with me ended up being in playboy and all this shit she actually ended up getting aids like years later <laughs> it was like the first 10 that i banged and then i asked this was in philadelphia and i asked like three or four years later like what happened to that chick like she became a porn star and got aids R.I.P. But, okay, so I was like, how, how can I make all this into a story? When we came back to my car after the show, my sports car had been sideswiped, right? So then I started telling this story to chicks. Oh, yeah, I was fucking, I was playing, I was playing this really fucking cool party the other night. It was awesome. Um, you know, it was kind of annoying because the chick that I brought, like, all the dudes were hitting on her because her fucking fake, big fake tits were out. Ha, ha, ha. Um, it was, like, the best night, though. And then... When I got back to my car, like, it was fucking sideswiped on the side, and I just bought this brand new car, like, a week or two ago. So, like, you're, you're okay, you're, you're signifying pre-selection with the girl, um, wealth and success, okay, with the car, and then social proof and, like, cool, adventurous, fun lifestyle with the DJing stuff. And I don't pre-construct stories anymore. That was, that was, like, back in the day. But I've had so many, like with all this game, like banging a thousand chicks all around the world, there's a whole bunch of fucking experiences that have happened, okay? So I just talk about all kinds of cool shit that's happened. But notice, when you tell these DHV stories, I wanna, this is very important to note, um, it's very important not to, here comes the fucking sun, so say goodbye to the green screen. Uh, it's very important not to uh, make the focus of the story, the DHV, I'm not like, oh, so I, I, I bought a new car. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, I was hanging out with this, like, super hot chick the other night. What do you think about that? You drop in the demonstrations of value and the attraction things as seats, as, like, indirect things that she kind of reads between the lines. Is like, oh, he fucks hot chicks. Oh, he drives a nice car. Oh, he fucking DJs cool parties. Okay, and this is that's just an example, right? I'm not going to go through all the different ones. In my product, in the Occam's Razor product, I have a giant section where I go through all the most common conversational threads that are centered around all the most common DHVs. Hold on, let me fucking close this. <clears throat> okay, let me see how this looks. So, a little better. All right, so in summary, uh, what, what, one more here. He says, uh, being socially in demand, other people are seeking your attention or validation. That happens just by having a lot of cool friends, having a cool life, having a bunch of different social circle groups having a lot of girls you're seeing, okay? When the chick's like, hey, what are you up to this week, okay? And you're like, oh, I'm doing this and this and this, or, or you're actually not free because you have plans with other girls, or you have plans with friends, okay? Like I'm in martial arts, I'm doing the gym, I'm hanging out with a bunch of people, I'm seeing a whole bunch of different girls. 
So I, I usually am busy a lot of the times. And I, and I also am working on my business, stuff like that. So I tell them, like, I, I actually can't hang out because of this. And also, I'm not texting them hardly ever because I'm busy doing other shit and I don't give a fuck. Right? So everything kind of comes into line when you're leading the life, when you're actually being a high-value male and being cool. So these DHV things can be real. And they should be. Like, don't just try to be great or put on an illusion of being great. Actually be great. This used to be talked about when I used to post in the forums back in 2012, 2013. It was like inspirational, like call to call to be like the best man you can be. Go forth, fucking do cool shit. Be the best version of yourself. Not in a like woo-woo, like RST self-help way. Okay, now they're running self-help boot camps. They made a complete shift. I don't know if it was because of feminism or restructuring within the company because people said Papa quit and all this stuff. But they're like, the forums are down and now they're just fucking huge you know, sopping wet pussy towels, <laughs> you know, running self-help pro I don't know. It's out of control now with them. Always has been gotten worse. Uh, okay. So speaking of RC, they did away with this concept of DHV to read it, reiterate that one last time. That's why it kind of got lost in the fray. And it also kind of was looked at as like kind of cheesy, like, Oh, routine game, routine game. No, get rid of that. I'm not saying you should have a set of canned routines you memorize and then you're just reciting from memory. The practical implication of DHVs, demonstrations of higher value, is do kind of like a survey of your current cool shit and cool qualities that are going on in your life and past cool shit and past cool qualities and then come up with a bunch of stories around those, okay? And then look at how they relate to that list of the attraction switches and, and of the demonstrations of higher value that he, that he put out there. Okay, which, which stories involve you dating hot chicks? Which stories involve you traveling and doing cool shit? Which stories involve you having a lot of friends and, and a lot of social proof, okay? Which stories involve you um, having success and achievement and, and excelling, okay? Either in career or academia or whatever. Um, which show that you have these other cool hobbies, right? Whether it be martial arts or whether you're fucking learning languages or, or it doesn't matter, okay? She wants the full package. Give her the full package. Be the full package, okay? So that's pretty much it. I don't want this to be too long. Demonstrations of higher value still are very relevant in our modern day and very important. They kind of got lost, you know, largely due to RSD. Fucking come, they came in and dominated the niche, Okay. It's not saying they were giving good information. I think it's a call following, and it's, and it's largely just to make money, okay, which is why they have over 30 products. I'm not going to go down the road of getting into a whole bash on them again. I've said it in many other videos. But they got rid of a lot of good concepts. Okay, So I'm telling you, this is still relevant. And this, is, this should be the core of your verbals, both in the interactions, in the clubs and in the daytime, and also in, on your dates. Okay. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, put in the, in the comments. Kind of a lot of fucking shit to cover, and this is a super important cornerstone in game. Um, thank you, Mystery. I'm going to try to get him on my, my channel for a podcast. But please like and subscribe below if you have not already. I have other important mystery concepts I'm going to be covering next week, including attraction switches and hoop theory. But thank you guys for watching and tuning in. And... Look forward to the RSD Max Roast on Thursday and an infield breakdown tomorrow on Wednesday. Okay, guys, thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>